Good morning, my name is Nick. I'm a woodworker out of Reno, Nevada. Today we are using the log arch trailer to go grab a tree. My buddy is doing a job uh, removing a bunch of trees for a new land project that's going in that's uh, less than a mile away. So I'm gonna show you all the tools that we need to go do that and give you a little tour of the process. So here we go. All right, so looking at the tools that you need, I have two chain binders. Uh, over in the corner, these are a bunch of just wood spacers that I put the log on to get the chain out from underneath it. A uh, handful of 3 8 chain there. This is a floor jack with an aluminum plate which you will see me use to stabilize the trailer while lifting. I have two saws that I absolutely love, a Steel 362 and an MS661. I always take both of them in case I hit a rock or something. Instead of changing out the chain, I'll just switch to the other saw. These are the electronics for the winch, which you will see me use with the log arch. And then I always take a pry bar with me and a log uh, cant. Um, this one's by Logrite and I really like it. Moving down the trailer, um, some of you have seen my prior videos on my trailer, but essentially this used to house a diesel generator, has a payload of 6,000 pounds. There's a gigantic squirrel that is going through the yard right now. Um, but anyway, uh, this is my mill, and it's a Hudson Warrior. I absolutely love it. I was milling yesterday. You can see this is a huge ash tree that is on deck, I call it. This is some massive sequoia pieces that we did. And then in the backyard, I have all of my log stacks. And essentially what I do is there's a tow strap that's coming out here, and that's how I draw drag the logs off of the log arch trailer. You can see underneath all those tarps there, I got probably about 100 slabs. Those are all 10 footers by about 30 inches wide. This is a quick tour of my shop. You can see I have a miter saw station over there. Uh, this is two elm pieces that are book matched up for a desktop that I'll be taking to the wide belt sander next week. I have a joiner in the back, a grizzly 20 inch planer that I really like. I also weld up all my own stands, so I have a little arc flat welding table here. My new air compressor that I really love. Small band saw, table saw, and then I have all my welding equipment in the back. All right, this is the tree we're going for. It's 24 inches in diameter. It's really straight and it has a lot of really cool knots on it. So I think it will make some good boards. That little twig that's sitting up on the top represents 11 feet. So my goal is to cut it there. And then this area up here is actually pretty flat, which makes a difference for the log arch trailer. It needs to be flat when you're loading. Otherwise it's gonna be a pain in the butt. So what you'll see me do is we'll end up cutting this and then drag it with the truck up to that landing and then get it loaded. All 
All right, so a couple things to note. The trailer is leaning towards us, I would say about 10 degrees. So one thing you have to anticipate is this log is gonna wanna come to this side of the trailer when we put it up, which is not a big deal. If you expect it coming, you can take some of these little pieces and just wedge it. And that's where these pieces come in. If you put spacers underneath it, it's much easier to ma manipulate once it's on the trailer. Cause then you could just get a chain, lift it up a little bit and move. If you don't do that, unless you have a different style of hook, you really have no way to grab onto it. not a bad tree uh, for 40 minutes worth of work you really can't turn down pieces that are this close to where you live um, this will make some nice probably I mean for today's prices we'll probably get at least four or five three inch slabs out of this at 225 bucks a piece when they're dry it's nice and straight a lot of character just to show you this is what I use to stabilize the rear of the trailer I know a lot of people have suggested different jacks and things like that. Just this, this works for me. It's easy to get in and out and it supports the trailer fine. And then moving up to the front, I just use Anderson connectors on the winch. This is a Badlands winch from Harbor Freight, the 12,000 pound. The connectors are there and then I just run it up to my truck and attach it to the batteries there. So I think probably one of the things that I enjoy most about this is this is not my full-time job. This is something I do as a hobby. So it gets me away from my job and I'm able to do something different. I like the fact that it's recycling, you know, these trees are scheduled for either the landfill or for firewood. And the fact that I can make furniture or I can sell them to someone who can make furniture, that excites me. I think it's cool. And I just love doing it. I know some people look at this and they think that it's crazy. Um, I love getting out and using the equipment, figuring it's different every time. Every time you go out, you're gonna run into a snag or something different, but this is fun to me and it's not that hard labor intensive wise once you get the hang of it. And like I said, 40 minutes and we're out the door. It's a pretty good day. All right, so we're getting ready to drag the log off. We are now back in my driveway where the sawmill is. You can see there's a chain wrapped around the tree and then there's some um, six by six horizontal posts that go in between the axles and the, the tree is gonna drop on that. I used to get really particular about getting the chain tight so that I can get it as far back on the mill without hitting the mill, but I don't do that anymore. I get it close and I drag it off and then you'll see me with the trailer. I just push the log back with the trailer and the bumper to get it where I want in relation to the mill. And then that way it also detentions the chain. Um, that practice works well. Do not ever put a log on your track and try to push it backwards with the same method. These uprights will catch it and it will push the whole track out of alignment and tweak it. And you really gotta kinda these things have to be calibrated and you gotta play with them a little bit. And if you start dropping logs onto your track, um, you're not gonna like the results that you get when you cut. So let's get a drug off and I'll show you that.
All right, so that's the process. You can see here there's a little red spray painted dot that I put on my mill track. That's as far as the blade travels forward, so as long as the tree is behind that, I'm good. This is the standard track configuration the saw comes with, and this log is 11 feet long. So obviously I've done this several times now, but you can see I have it dead on perfect in the back to where I rolled it right over this wheel, and then we're gonna get the max length out of this, which would be 11 feet, and start sawing up some boards. So hopefully you like this video. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see me doing more of this or to see how this log looks once we saw it up. Have a great day. Thank you.